If you're a beginner and you're researching how to use a calligraphy pen, I'm going to show you the exact steps in this tutorial. Figuring out how to assemble it correctly for the first time can feel confusing and overwhelming, but just keep watching and you'll learn how to put together a pointed pen to use for calligraphy. First, let's understand the difference between an oblique holder and a straight holder. With a straight holder, the nib, or also called a pen point, comes straight out the end. For an oblique holder, you have this piece right here that holds the nib. This piece is called the flange, and the nib is inserted into the flange, which is then in the pen holder. The benefit of using a flange for an oblique holder is that if you're right-handed, it helps you write at an angle, so the nib is at an angle, so that your letters look more slanted. If you're left-handed, then you might find it easy to write with a straight holder because your hand is already kind of angled that way, but righties and lefties, you can try either one. That's actually why I recommend using a oblique holder because you can use it as either a straight holder or an oblique holder. And I'm gonna show you how to assemble it either way. So it's pretty straightforward to assemble it as a straight holder. The nib comes out the end and you can see from this view, the shape of the nib is curved. And the curved part goes right into the curved end like this. Okay, and then you just insert the nib like that. And now your straight holder is ready to use. The oblique holder is a little bit more confusing to put together. So first let's start by taking it apart. I'll remove the nib and then the flange. Now for some pen holders, the flange actually does not come out and it's not supposed to come out. But for this one, you can change between the two. This is what the end of the oblique holder looks like. And if you were using it as a straight holder, again, you would just put the nib in like that. But to use it as an oblique holder, we're going to insert the flange. So I'm gonna pick up the flange by the curved part, and then the other part is going to go in the center hole right there. And then it will come through this little slot. So I'm going to kind of squeeze it together to make sure that it fits in there, and then just push it down as far as it goes, like that. Here's what it looks like from the side and I'll take it out and put it back in from the side view as well. So I'm holding the curved part that the nib goes in and the top of the curve is on my thumb. And then I'm just going to insert it and push it all the way down like that. Here's what it looks like from the bottom. And one more time from the top. So next to put the nib in, so the curved end of the nib is going to go in the curved side of this, and there's really a, only one way that it will fit. Of course, you don't want to put the point in, the point comes out, but you can hold it at the end and put the curved part into the flange like this. If you try putting it in the wrong way, then it's not going to go in. So as I'm holding it like this, the flange is on the left side of the pen. The curve is on the top for both the flange and the pen, the nib. Then I'm just going to insert it. Now, how far do you put the nib in? The answer is if you look at the center line of the pen, the tip of the nib should be aligned with the center line of the nib. So this is too far. And for this nib, this is just a, not far enough because it's going a little bit past the center line. So for the Nico G nib, it's going to come out the end just a little bit for this setup. If you're learning something new, I'd love for you to give this video a like so that we know to keep making this type of content for you. Now I'm going to show you how to dip your pen into the ink and use it. So I have a small container of ink off to the side. I'm using Sumi ink, and then this paper is HP Premium 32 pound paper. So I'm gonna dip my nib into the ink and try to cover up the open hole. I'm not gonna dip any farther than that though because I don't wanna get ink on my actual pen. Now you can see that the ink is 
stuck to the nib. If your ink is pooling on the nib, that's because a brand new nib has a coating on it from the manufacturer that you have to get off. That's called prepping a nib. And a simple way to do that is just by either using some dish soap, or you can actually use a tiny bit of Windex and you'll spray it on the nib, wipe it off, rinse it off with some water, and then it should be ready to use. You can do it a variety of different ways, depending on who you ask, but I think that's the easiest way. So you can see as I'm writing here, the thing that's special about a pointed pen is that you can create different thicknesses in your strokes. When I'm pressing lightly and just gliding across the point of the pen, I'm making thin strokes. And then when I press down, I can get thick strokes. And the rule of thumb for copper plate calligraphy with a pointed pen is that your upstrokes are thin and your downstrokes are thick. And it's actually impossible to make a thick upstroke because if you're pushing down, you can't move in the upward direction because of the point of the pen. And you'll need to redip your pen when the when you see through that hole again because your ink will run out and you won't be able to create those thick shades anymore it will look like this if you're taking a pause i always recommend cleaning off your nib i keep a paper towel handy with a little straight spray bottle so i can make the paper towel just a little bit damp clean off the nib i'm just using my finger on the back side to press against it lightly Let's quickly talk about the differences between a pointed pen and a fountain pen. But first I'm just gonna use a regular, this is just a regular ballpoint pen. The way that a ballpoint pen works is there's a tiny little metal ball at the end and the ink is dispersed over that ball as you write and you have to press down. The ink in a ballpoint pen is oil-based. Now for a fountain pen, this is just a zebra fountain pen. It kind of looks like a pointed pen nib. They're both metal, they're both kind of pointed at the end, but there are two main differences. So for a fountain pen, you may notice that I didn't have to dip it in the ink. The ink is already inside the body of the pen. And then also, no matter how hard I'm pressing down, whether I'm pressing light or hard, I'm getting the same thickness for the stroke. In other words, this pen is not flexible. No matter how hard you press, you're just gonna get the same stroke thickness. And a difference between a fountain pen and a regular pen is that this ink is water-based. It's not oil-based and it just kind of flows out. It's a lot more fluid and smooth to write with. Another difference is that the, the direction or the angle of the nib of the fountain pen doesn't really matter. You could write with it in this direction or in this direction, depending on how you hold your pen however is comfortable for you, it doesn't really make a difference. But for a pointed pen, the angle does matter. You want to keep the angle of your nib in the same direction as your downstrokes. And if you're dealing with big blobs of ink like that, you might have too much ink on your nib. You can also play around with the ink consistency by adding water to it. So your nib needs to be parallel to the direction of your strokes. When I'm moving downward, notice that the stroke and the nib are parallel. Here's what it would look like if it was not parallel. Okay, and the reason is because no matter how hard I press down, I'm not gonna get that thick downstroke. Like I showed you before, you also can't get thick strokes in the upwards direction. So for copper plate, you need to be able to get thick downstrokes by pressing on your pen and pushing down. And by the way, I kind of showed you this before, but the way that this works is when you press down, the tip of the nib splits open like that. And then when you release pressure, it closes. So that's how you're able to get a thick stroke. We have a video all about nibs for beginners. Right now I'm using a Nico G nib, which is great for beginners. You can also try a Hunt 101, which is more flexible and more sharp, but watch our video about nibs for beginners so that you know which one to choose for you. If you're wondering how to practice and how to improve your calligraphy, the best tip that I have for you is to use a guide sheet. Right now I was just writing on blank paper. There are no lines helping me, but we have a guide sheet that you can use. And here's what it looks like. We have some traceable fundamental strokes, and then we also have some 
guides here for you to use. We have a whole video about how this guide sheet works. But the benefit of using guidelines is that you can write in a straight line, you can write at a consistent angle. So for copper plate, the angle is 52 degrees. And you can see I just got a huge ink blob right there that happens. If you're getting that, you can try shaking excess ink off of your nib. I probably should have done that before I started writing that thick down stroke. So you can practice the basic strokes and try to make them consistent. Consistent in width, angle. This one's a little bit too narrow compared to the rest. And once you get the basic strokes down, then you can write words. You also want to get your thickness of your downstrokes even. That one's a little bit thinner than those. And the thickness of your downstrokes will depend on the nib you're using, but also how hard you're pressing down. I'm pressing really hard on that one. You can get a pretty thick line with this nib, but you do have to press really hard. So I don't actually recommend trying to get the thickest line you can possibly get. As long as there's contrast between thick and thin. So for example, if you want to try out your first word, you can write the word high. And the word high is a combination of just a couple strokes. This one right here is called an ascending stem loop. And then we'll draw a compound curve next to it. And then we will finish with an underturn that we were chasing before. So let's put that all together. We'll do an ascending stem loop. And then a compound curve next to it. and then finish with an underturn. And then we'll dot the I. And that might be your first word that you ever wrote in calligraphy. Thank you for watching and I hope you are inspired to pick up your pointed pen and try using it today.